Hi, my name is Kenneth Steinbach. Um, I'm a professor here at Bethel University and uh, one of the co-curators of the Constructive Mystery Shows that uh, I'm standing in the midst of right here uh, in the Olson Gallery at Bethel University. The other co-curator was Michelle Westmark Wingard. Constructed Mysteries is a show that came out of a previous body of research that I did. I had been writing a book uh, called Creative Practices for Visual Artists where I interviewed about 80 mid-career artists to try to figure out how they stayed creatively viable for a lifetime. During those conversations, I would often hear people say things about spirituality or be uncomfortable perhaps, or perhaps a little reserved about talking about issues of spirituality. You know, can I, can I really talk about this in these interviews? So I chatted with Michelle about this and we developed this project, which is a show that's specifically about Christian spirituality and artistic practice and the way that those two intersect and overlap with each other. The show actually exists in two parts. One is the artwork that you see uh, around us right here, um, uh, artwork by nine different artists or artist teams. Uh, it's a terrific set of a very diverse group. And the other part is the series of interviews uh, with an introductory essay that I wrote, but a series of interviews in which all of the artists discuss some of uh, how they understand that. Three themes that emerged uh, from the artist interviews, conversations with the artists, were related to the idea of process, uh, the idea of silence, and the idea of dismantling. Process is uh, really foundational to how artists are making. They're not walking into the studio with these strong agendas, but both their artwork and their spirituality are developing over time and through a very interactive process that just keeps going and going. Another foundational idea that you see was the power of silence and the need to sort of silence the inner monologue, uh, both in a spiritual sense and also in a creative sense. And so the studio's experience is one where it's not just a silence uh, that's about a lack of talking, but it's about a, having a lack of agenda. The artist is not demanding that the art do something or that their spirituality do something, but there is a sense of freedom and playfulness there. And then one of the final things is kind of dismantling ways of thinking looking at visual ideas that they have seen before, taking those apart, and that has parallels, that has strong parallels with spirituality. Many of the artists really see the, the artwork as a method of, of kind of taking apart things in, in spirituality that are prohibitive or things that, in a spiritual sense, that, that are not working or need to be re-examined. So in this video, we're going to be hearing from the artists as they discuss issues related to art and Christian spirituality. Maker Reliquary is composed of three sewing machine cabinet drawers arranged in a triptych with their openings against the wall. Flanking the metal snips are two small pulleys. I've presented these relics in the construct of a religious reliquary. Relics achieve distinction precisely because they are collected and honored. Here, the snip, the tin snips, pulleys, and sewing drawers are made worthy of our contemplation, particularly in regards to perceptions about manual labor and craftsmanship. The title of this piece is Washboard Wings. A glass washboard is the centerpiece of wings that are composed of 35 pairs of vintage ladies' gloves. Glass washboards came into use during World War II when metals were scarce. During the war, gloves were a luxury that many women couldn't justify, especially those who used washboards to do the family laundry. Washboard wings calls to mind the mothers and domestics who roughed their hands scrubbing someone else's bed linens and clothing. This piece is called Fenêtre de Reparateur, French for window of repairers. Inside are 41 vintage red pincushions. Each pincushion bears the evidence of interaction with human hands. Many still hold the pins and threads inserted by their previous owners. This work speaks about a culture of menders, people who choose to save, repair, and transform damaged things. This artwork entitled Missive is basically a mundane envelope that I've splayed open and embellished with lace-like paint marks. I purchased a trunk at a Northern California flea market that contained ephemera once belonging to a Miss Myrna Hughes. Reading through her letters and news clippings, I discovered she was a Stanford University graduate and budding stage actress in the late 1920s, early 30s. 
I think old letters have a deeply physical sense of humanity. They constitute histories that are both personal and collective. Alike the abstract shape and age of the paper, there's a sense of mystery to it. The composition marks my presence and intervention in the world of Miss Hughes. So this artwork called Divide and Conquer is based on uh, a series about exploring past traumas. In contemporary culture, the idea of divide and conquer really was also revealing traumas that I was experiencing in the present tense related to the politicization of absolutely everything in our culture and how we are us and the other instead of a united whole. This piece right here is called Force, Capacity, and Load. It really is a, a piece that references through abstraction the burdens of just being in today's culture. Um, my tiles uh, tend to refer to uh, either the, the bathroom tile and that space of the confessional. Growing up as the oldest of five kids, that bathroom space was so sacred because it was your only moment to be alone in the house. It's this place where, like, in the shower, you get this, like, flood of thoughts because we're in that moment of mental solitude. And it is that silence that really makes that space a moment for introspection. The process of cutting tiles is very violent, it's almost like a screaming. Um, so when I'm reflecting on my, my traumas, there's a, a trauma with the materials that also happens at the same time. Are You My Mother was titled after the child book, Are You My Mother? This piece references my, my own desire to find my mother, to find that, that nurturing voice within myself. Even though I am a mother, it's not so much about motherhood as it is about childhood. In a lot of my pieces, you'll see illusions of space, and I use those illusions of space to create different moments of simultaneous realities that are sometimes in conflict with each other. This is Caroline Kent. The three works on paper that I have in the exhibition are exemplary of the starting point into my practice. Through the overproduction of these works, which function as sketches or drawings, these works over time have accumulated into a kind of archive of personal marks, shapes, improvisations, and investigations of form. The archive is active as it's an ongoing exercise of continually adding to the collection. For me, the archive functions as a site that I can make other kinds of works from. This is a really important value to me. I think of these works as the place where the language I've developed works itself out over time. These works are essential to my practice as they really serve as a space where I can be the most free, uncalculated, experimental, and follow my intuition without regard for an outcome. From here, a gesture of the paint, a shape, or say a pattern, will make its way into another work that would be produced possibly in a painting, a sculpture, or a drawing. The act of translating through material is a means to expand the nature of this language and to consider that there is more to gain, to understand about the language and how it can potentially operate when in a given context or adjacent to very specific subjects. These three works, though they appear to be finished, complete works, and don't necessarily overtly reveal their sketches or experimentation are actually all of those things at the same time. Traveling Shoes is a performance work that draws upon the song written by James A. Bland, Them Golden Slippers. This song talks about having your golden shoes, your golden slippers ready in order to go home or to go to heaven. So it's about this idea of preparation for redemption and keeping your shoes clean in the process as a sort of symbolic gesture towards thinking about our deeds in life. This, this work and this song have been brought together to think about what it means to express and reflect upon the labor of the shoe shiner 
as a person who is capable of giving you access to this form of redemption. Basically, a two-seater shoeshine trailer, or perhaps better stated, chariot, um, is dragged through Atlanta, through a crowd of thousands, providing literally gold leaf for the shoes of anyone who takes the time to stop. At the same time, on the back of the chariot is a three-piece jazz band that's playing a version of them golden slippers that's enriched with all sorts of different dimensions and emotions. This was created as a piece with Bradley Dever Treadaway, who's a, a videographer and an artist with which um, I've collaborated over the past 20 years. Jason Thompson, who did all of the musical scoring and is the musical performer. Um, and then Stephanie Nelson, who did some choreography for us on this project with um, the, a high school that was local to Atlanta. So we have this sort of overlapping of these high school band that eventually plays and performs with the jazz band. And that evening, we did probably a couple hundred pairs of shoes. And so what you're seeing is a few hours of performance that have been condensed down into a fluid piece interjected with non-live recordings and everything else that kind of work together to construct uh, a breakdown between sort of the idea of documentation and the idea of the creation of a piece. This work is one that is part of a larger series dedicated to the gold leafing of shoes that have happened throughout the past 10 years of, of my career. Prompted by a request of the curators to pair the video with a photograph of gold shoes made during another performance, we use the photo as a foundation to create an object that integrates elements and draws from portions of our process and material used over the years in our collaborative work. The image is applied to a wood panel using inkjet transfer techniques whose edges are stripped and torn to avoid clean, formal edges. Upon the wood panel is attached a mechanics rag, a material often used within our Gold Shoes performance applications, as well as being a core material within our installation-based works. Also attached to the wood panel is an antenna, which is a repeating element that exists within our work and serves as a metaphor for unanswered calls and unreceived responses a symbol that signifies the breakdowns of intergenerational communication happening within American communities today. As an artist, I generally work on walls, whether through painting or drawing or photography or site-specific interventions. But in my studio, the most important surfaces are the horizontal ones. My tables are covered in piles, bits of images, scraps of paper, studies for paintings. These materials are the fodder for my practice, and they quietly carry on conversations behind the scenes from one tabletop to the next. Some piles are temporary, and others sit there for years, not ready to be put away. This book began out of a reshuffling of some of these piles, something I periodically do when I need to find a new way forward. As I moved the scraps around, a narrative started to form, organized around a postcard of Botticelli's tiny Annunciation painting that hangs at the Met. This now faded postcard has been a background presence in my studio for probably 20 years now. I've made various drawings of the painting over the years, and many of the visual motifs that I repeatedly play with find echoes in this painting. Framed views, doubled spaces, and the transformative potential of light. The book I've made is a string of juxtapositions and studio fodder, a portable glimpse into my studio practice. The images riff on the Botticelli painting, looping into my world and back again, weaving a pattern out of the surprising affinities and discoveries that emerge through the everyday habits of the studio. In the book, what begins as an orderly set of rhythms is interrupted by a new dimension, the light from my window, raking in and suddenly imbuing the surfaces with new possibility and new life, which I think is what we as artists and as people are always hoping for. My name is Shin Hee Jin. My work in the Constructive Mysteries set out to integrate the media and technique of both traditional Asian and American culture into new ways of art making. 
the two major constituting media, text and cloth, are arranged as equal ingredients, signifying the coexistence of different cultural legacies in one's life and communities. My work is an effort to draw connections between my inner life and the world beyond. Naming, 이름 짓기 This looks like a long vertical scroll, which is popular writing orientation in Asia. My names are written in horizontal orientation. Each line is a stitch, it, indicating one year per line. Traditionally, Korean women have little control over their names. As an artist and a woman, I wanted to reclaim my name. Mother tongue and foreign language. 모국어와 외국어 English jacket on the left is bought at the thrift shop, and Korean jacket on the right is handmade and quilted. The words are stenciled and fabric painted in English and Korean. It says, My mother tongue is your foreign language. 나의 모국어는 너의 외국어다. Your mother tongue is my foreign language. 너의 모국어는 나의 외국어다. When one identifies a mother tongue, any other language becomes the other. The text is used in each piece as a symbol of a mother tongue that is so fundamental in the fabric of one's being. I use it to emphasize the critical role, language, and a system of discourse play in contemporary culture in defining, dividing, and connecting people. Passages is a collective project created with a contemporary chamber music ensemble, Torch, which is based in Seattle, Washington. My primary collaborator was Brian Chin, who helped refine the narrative and was partly inspired by stories that he had heard about recent immigrants to the United States. The music was also composed collaboratively, with each member of Torch taking on the task of crafting various themes, then the rest of the composers riffing off of one another to complete the six cycles of imagery that accompany the six cycles of music. The visual art was created in a small studio with limited resources featuring live action actors and props, with digital manipulation of that footage and hand-drawn animation layered over the top. I tried to make use of time-honored strategies of social and political satire, most importantly, absurdity and slapstick humor. The project comments on resistance to the other, the fear and paranoia we saw brewing in our society, and the way that media saturation and misinformation have warped our collective consciousness. I was also interested in exploring how questions around masculinity and power play out in our world, particularly the toxic masculinity that we could see all around us, and then how people who perceive themselves as powerful often fall from grace I was inspired by the story of Nebuchadnezzar, who was an ancient king who ended up going mad and eating grass in a field in the biblical narrative. We also wanted to bring attention to the inspiring and resilient stories of hope that we could find in the face of historical tragedy and ecological crisis. Brian Chin explains how the project was developed in his own mind. He says, The cycle idea was inspired by a testimonial and a story I heard in church about two years ago. A woman in El Salvador was working as a police officer when she was targeted by an organized crime gang. She immediately fled the country with her child and traveled north to seek asylum. Upon arrival at the U.S. border, they were detained and eventually deported back to El Salvador. Her life still threatened, she simply took her kid by the hand and traveled north again, starting the cycle all over again. <laughs> 